have none other than our automobile salesperson who is a part of the Boston Praise Radio and TV Network, and his name is Jeremy. Uh, it's actually Jeremiah. Um, that's okay, though. How are you, Pastor Wall? <laughs> Uh, Jeremiah is, is who you are, and Jeremiah is what I call you. I am doing well, as Pastor Hobbs would say, by the grace of God. <laughs> I'm doing well. And, yeah. and, and, I, have a, I have a quick question before we actually get going with okay. Go does, Pastor Hobbs, does Pastor Hobbs have a relationship? No, sir, but I actually went to the Registry of Vehicles today just to find out I'm um, in fact all the things that I to, that I needed to do went with my friend as I my goal was to get this before the year end and um actually I learned that there's That's a, good news. Well, thank you, man. Thank <laughs> you, thank you, thank you. So we're still you know in the pro we're make we're moving forward. We're making progress. Um, give me give me a little more than that. What do you mean? Making well, progress. Go on. Well, I said, so I actually went to the registry today to find out exactly what I need to do to be able to actually go in. And I thought it was as simple as a matter of taking the test, but unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, there's a couple of places I've got to call to get what they call, uh, uh, I don't know, some, uh, some, some documentation that, in fact, the things have been cleared up. So various different places like excise tax in Haverhill, where I lived in, or at one point where I had a vehicle. So they're oh, saying. So you, you just have, like, bad bills you got to pay before you're eligible to get it, right? Correct. But it, okay, yes, okay, yes. okay, all right. So um, and if, if you were to pay those, are you looking at a permit or are you looking at a, um, a license? A permit first. I mean, I, I have to, unfortunately, that will be the process. And once I get resolved, everything that needs to be resolved, then the next step is because it's been so long that I actually have to get my permit and then go for the road test. How long has it been since you had a license? It's been a you long no, no, my, it's been it's been a very long time. I don't even know to be honest with you. It's been years, I'd say. I don't know. Would you say over or under ten? I would say m more than ten. More than ten. Yeah. All uh, right. My next question. Um, <laughs> and that's all for the record. These are the questions that I have to ask customers to actually be able to help them, and they always ask me like these these questions are probing, and my direct response is just around I'm not gonna waste your time. But the more questions you answer, the better I can help you. Um. And it's absolutely, the more honest you are, the more I can help you. So, <laughs> uh, quickly, Bob, you said over 10 years, right? I believe so, yes. Okay, my next question is, how was how was your driving record back then? Was it clean? Was it dirty? Accidents? What were we talking about? No accidents. I mean, you know, a couple speeding tickets. I think that's probably driving without a license or a suspended license, that kind of situation. Okay. But well, we're talking like all, all like, uh, you know, early 20s, teen kind of stuff, right? Yes. Okay. So, not only am I going to put you in a car of your dreams, <laughs> but I'm also going to help you out with insurance. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what I mentioned it, uh, maybe a week or two weeks ago about a few insurance companies that I work with. Um, and for the record, if you, if, uh, you guys don't remember, but for, for all the listeners, um, how it works basically is I work with a few insurance companies and we I send them so much business that okay. they give my customers rates they don't offer to the public more than more than not better than their current insurance company. Beautiful. That's a good thing. So my next question to you and I'll leave it alone. Um are you looking for just like a commuter car or A to B or are you looking for something, you know, that you want to keep like the next say eight years? Uh, I haven't really thought that far. Be, <laughs> I, I haven't really thought thought that far to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I haven't thought that far, and it's interesting. You went to the R&B, buddy. It's definitely time to start thinking about it. You know? Well, yeah, but again, <laughs> let's let's get the license. Let's get. The, I'm, I'm let's I'm putting one step in. You know, taking one step at a time. So the notion of eight years or that is really just something that I haven't even thought to even consider because I haven't even got the permit or the license or paid whatever needs to be paid. So I'm just baby steps. You know? Baby steps, right? Yes, sir. All right, well, the good news is we already have the insurance worked out and we have the dealership you're going to go to and a servant you're going to buy from. So one thing I guess we're really going to work out is the right car for you. Well, I got to tell you, you know, a friend of mine actually works for an auction and I'm just curious. I'm really, really curious about this because um. 
you know, when I did have the last car that I did have that actually was from a dealership and was making payments and so forth and so on, um, I actually let that car go because a friend of mine had a beautiful Jaguar that I absolutely loved and I learned to drive stick by driving the Jaguar and he was supposed to help me via an auction get these phenomenal deals that you can get at an auction and a friend of mine now works at an auction so I'm curious, you know, and of course I'm sure you have a perspective, right, you know, going to an auction. By I'm already ready to go. Say again? I said, I'm already ready to go. I have my responsibility locked and loaded. Okay, so I, since, go ahead. <laughs> and, and well, it's funny. It's funny. Um, Prime actually, on certain occasions, is very rare, but Prime actually goes to the auction and, and, and sees the different cars that people are buying and what the market rates are and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's why we press, price our cars so aggressively because we have to compare it within maybe a 50-mile radius so that people come to us. But you got to understand even if a customer tells you they don't, they didn't do any research or go online, uh -huh. they did. And, and nine times out of ten, they looked at three other dealerships, and the reason they come to us is because we have the most aggressive prices. So we take very seriously what we price our cars out to be. That being said, at the auction, you really got to understand that these are cars that people jump. These are cars that, seriously, people people beat up, and, and they, they, they slap paint on it. They don't do any mechanical work, and they sell and buy as is. If you want a car for like a year, six months, or when you drive it right, right out of the auction, it breaks down and the engine dies, go for it. But <laughs> the, all jokes aside, seriously, the auction is also, the auction is for people that buy with their eyes and don't ask to look at the car facts. Okay. But I guess it really depends on your particular circumstance and what you need out of the vehicle. Like if you want a car that's reliable and you can depend on and that you know you have somebody who's going to be busting it behind working for you, Probably where you want to be. Well, specifically me. But if you seriously, if you need something just for like a year, two years, get you from point A to point B, then maybe the option is where you want to look. But either way, they'll tell you the car, and nine times out of ten, you have a problem by me driving off a lot. Okay, well, that's good. That's good food for thought. I mean, it's interesting because I mean, even as it relates to leasing, I mean, I would have never considered leasing um in the past and you know hearing pastor wall's experience and and just some of your logic quite candidly and other people who i know who actually lease it you know i have a really different perspective today so um it's very very um interesting just to look at all the perspectives and to you know so you can make an intelligent decision short term and or long term believe it or not pastor Wall, you don't even know this but i've been talking about um in the interim once i uh, uh, just for transportation um, purposes until I'm actually able to clear up whatever I need to clear up and to get the road test and the permit and the license and or a vehicle short term I'm looking at maybe getting believe it or not a, a bike and I don't mean a bike like a like a motorcycle bike but believe it or not that's what I, I tell you man because I definitely see you on a motorcycle you're, 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 you're one of those guys really well it's, yeah, it's like it. a sports bike yeah, that's what I'm thinking Let's about. Watch. That's really what I'm thinking Let's about, Pastor. And so now, because no, tell me, I don't, I don't think you even need to have, um, you know, a license per se. I think it was, in fact, Curtis was telling me if it's a certain size, a certain whatever. I believe you don't even have to go to the registry and get. Is that true? Do you know? I do know. Um, I was actually going to get a bike at one time. Um, so for how the bike works, you definitely you need to go take a class to get your permit. But I mean, you got to think about it. Like if you have your permit. So you're going to be riding with somebody on the back all the time. So once you get your permit, you are allowed to drive freely wherever you want, you know. Um, honestly, I'm not knocking bikes. Like, honestly, I think they look great. They, they, they drive nice. They're good. But at the end of the day, it's really just two wheels in the road and all these other crazy drivers. not discouraging bikes. I'm just speaking from my own experience. I've actually seen a, a bike accident maybe a month and a half ago, two, two months ago, and I was going maybe 30 miles an hour in a parking lot, and my arm is still healing, so in my head, bikes have left a bad taste, but financially, gas-wise, it, 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 it's better than I ever, you're, you're paying 12 bucks for the week. Um, Insurance-wise, you're paying maybe $50 for the whole year. So financially, from a financial standpoint, it's absolutely a steal, but as far as safety is concerned, honestly, I wouldn't go that route. 
I mean, again, I'm talking. About, I'm, I'm talking about short term in the interim. So you know, just to be able to. I mean, even as you know, some of my my hours are changing here at the station and so forth. And I'm thinking, okay, it's just short distance, even really, you know, from where I live to here. I mean, I, you know that that. Do you know how to ride a bike, Mister? You know what? I don't, but I can learn. You know, the funny thing is about that. Again, and I'm not knocking bikes. I'm seriously speaking from my own experience. Um, Let's just play that out. So you have to first get a permit for the bike. If you want to, well, you have to take a class on the bike first, then get your permit. You need to put money into this class to actually get the bike. Mm-hmm. Um, now, is that any 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 bike? I mean, you see a lot of these kids running around riding around on these bikes that you know. I don't even know that you know. I mean, again, it seems to me like Curtis, who has a bike, was telling me that you can get one level of a bike, and you see people riding all around the city. These young kids, you know, with these bikes. I don't know that these are bikes so I, that that you even have to take that class and or get the permit. You know, it's funny they have a word for that. It's called illegal. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, I mean, like, no, I, I mean, I, I've seen it. I've seen the kids on the four wheels and, like, the little kids on the two wheels and the small bikes driving around and, like, on Blue Hill and, and Dorchester. That's those, I can guarantee, not guarantee you, but 75% that, that those those bikes don't register. Okay. Um, honestly, I really just wouldn't do it, to be honest. I just don't think, I mean, I understand you want something from point A to point B, but let me just, let me say this. Yesterday, I saw a, a family... Yeah, they just had a baby, a full of family, a Prius 3, Prius V3, which is like the Prius that has the big, the big, uh, the big back, almost like a station wagon. Uh-huh, you know uh-huh. The car they traded in was a 2002 Black Civic automatic, fully loaded. So we're talking, we're talking leather, we're talking sunroof, we're talking uh, AM, FM radio, the whole nine. Great brand new tires on the car, black on black. It had about a hundred and... 20,000 miles on, and for those who don't know, a Honda or a Toyota, it was a baby mouse compared to how far that car could be. Keep in mind, it was an O2, and the car was running like you just bought it yesterday. And they're going to put it on the lot, I would say, for no more than $6,000. This car is, is, I'm telling you, it'll make all the girls jealous. They're going to have to wait you work, just... The, the whole night, like, that car is, is, is beautiful. I tried to sell it to a buddy of mine yesterday, he doesn't have a car, but he works with me. And it, it's very affordable, you don't have car payments, nothing like that. So, again, with the whole bike thing versus car thing, I think it's a more, it's, a, it's more of a fact of safety, especially since you're in the process of getting your permit and your license to work out your issues, but it's winter time. You're not going to be riding that bike in the winter time, especially if you have a win like you did the year before. You know, honestly, all across the board, I think a car outweighs pros and cons. Motorcycle. <laughs> Not saying you want a little one, but I'm just saying that you know, summertime maybe. It's funny. You you say, it's funny you say that because I'm. I'm this. Uh, there's a whole lot of people who are talking to me via Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it about this, and I mean, and it's funny. I'm getting all kind of feedback. Um, I mean, from as far as Ibina from Australia saying, "What you're gonna get?" Because we talked about when I was there in Australia, she actually had what like an electric bike. That's like it, it's really pretty cool. Um, you know, it's a stationary bike, but it's also an electric bike, which was. Well, I mean, we and all, all she doesn't drive and doesn't believe in it because of, you know the carbon emissions and so forth, and it's about you know being eco friendly. And so we literally went all across Australia via these electric bikes. I haven't really seen them here but um and so she's saying you know am i talking about a petrol bike or an electric bike <laughs> yes i'm your question yes i'm not trying to be slick or anything it'll be okay it'll be wise or anything if you were to go into a doctor's office uh-huh right or like an emergency room or something right yes and you were to try to read like the doctor's note yep on the whatever patient they have yes it's written in like gibberish, so not not to say that you know somebody is, le- is less intelligent, but just they have practiced and they have studied that particular art, so they know exactly what they're talking about. Would you agree? Uh, sure. The same thing kind of applies to cars. Okay. You know what I mean, like especially when I see a good car that I see the value in and, 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 and I want to push it mm-hmm. it's because again I see the value and I'm extremely passionate about it and I start thinking about the people that I know you know that I care about that maybe don't have a car or are paying too much for you know finance the car I want to get into something else 
That's, that's me being serious. Me jokingly saying, come on, have you seen the suits that you wear? The suits that who, the who wears, you, me? You, your suits are on point. So you, <laughs> you, need, you need to be riding down, you know, top of the ass, Washington Street. In a car. On a four wheel. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, the well it, it's funny because I, I, you know, I hear you. I feel you. Um, a young man like yourself, come on. You know, like, man, let's go. <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying. It's interesting because, um, again, some of the feedback that I'm getting, one, is with regard, is saying the money that you would take and buy a bike, you could buy a nice, inexpensive car. And that a, a, a car, a bike is not for uh, winter, it's for summer. So, all, to, to, to your points. It's good. But now my friend who actually works for the auction is saying yep. that to tell you that I don't want to pay APR or interest. The car, I'm telling you, well, the car specifically, I'm telling well, basically you're saying you don't want a car payment, or you're saying you don't want to pay interest on it. I think it's in interest, because he said APR, and I said, I didn't know what APR meant. I said question mark, and he said interest. Yeah, it, it, means, it means the interest rate. Um, well, I would say for somebody who wants a brand new car, mm-hmm. you have two options. Toyota either gives you special financing, which is the interest rate, or they give you whatever rebate is on the car that month. Mm-hmm. I've seen rebates go up to $2,500 off a car and change the payments dramatically. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you want the APR or the interest rate, honestly, it, it varies again from month to month. The programs change. This is how Toyota, the company, not Prime, but Toyota makes us do it. Mm-hmm. It changes. You can get special financing like 0%. I remember maybe a month or two ago we had 0% and everybody in town and their mothers was coming in buying these brand new cars because there was zero percent interest. Wow. You know, even even if the payment went up a thousand because you lose a rebate or if it's five hundred or whatever, but the, the the pros are with the cons, like I said. So right now I think it's zero point nine. Okay. The special the special uh um finance thing, APR or whatever the case. Mm-hmm. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Are you trying to go brand new? Or are you trying to go used? I mean, I, I think, I think budget wise, I think I will be going used. I don't think I'm in a position again initially to get um, new, and unless I did leasing, um, you know, or, or those pre-owned, one of those, you know, those kind of situations. Um, so again, I'm just looking at all the uh, short term and long term. Um, and so again, the, the whole bike was kind of thinking, but now that we've kind of talked it through, it does seem like it makes more sense if I was going to, even if I was going to do an auction, something that would be something, as you said, short term, would at least then until I was able to get something um, and or looking at the leasing option. Well, uh, again, that's how I, was, I mean, I think it don't believe it seriously. Um, for young people like you and myself, you know, we still got a lot more living to do. Um, I feel like leases are the best option because not saying you're indecisive, but I know myself like I am when it comes to certain decisions, especially one as big as a car. Um, so leasing, honestly, is is the way to go. Leasing, honestly, is, is definitely the way to go. And I say that because, again, people buy with their eyes. So you walk into the dealership, you test out the car, you fall in love with it, you start personalizing the car, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to add this, wait till my friends see me. You start just putting things together in your head. And then you see the payment. Mm-hmm. And it's like, is this car really worth it? That's why I discourage people from financing, because if you finance, every year the car decreases about $1,000. So when you spend 30 grand on the car and you bring it in two, three years later, you are not going to get the same amount of money that you pay for the car, especially if it has a bad car tax, damaged, or the car is just messed up. You're not going to get the same amount of money. So, oh, I mean, I appreciate it. Go ahead. No, no, I appreciate what you're saying. I mean, and it, I mean, I, I know about the depreciation. Really, even if a brand new car, you know, the minute you drive it off the lot, it depreciates. So I, I get that. I understand that. That's why I'm saying you've really helped me to kind of change my mindset relative to to leasing, vice owning. People think, oh, I have to own it, but own it for what? If it's not worth, really, by the time you paid it off and the interest and so forth, it's not worth. You're it. gonna want something else because there's gonna be that new technology. There's gonna be something else that you don't have in your car. I don't care if cars fly. Ten years from now, there's going to be cars that go to space or something crazy. So you're going to want you're going to want to be current. You know what I mean? So like for leasing, I feel like that really gives people a hundred different options. Your situation's changed. Let's say let's say you have a baby. Let's say let's say you move you move you move across state. Let's say you have a relative that got a bit died. Something like that. Like things change, financial situations change. You know, so you really need to be forward thinking and future thinking, and not just about what I want now and what my friends are going to like and how much space I have. This is exactly why I push fast walkers to hide in the lease. 
Because if this man is saving crazy money on gas, I couldn't tell you how many times he called me in the morning on my way to work right. and laughed at me because when I, when I drive down the street, I'm out of gas, and he's driving off like two weeks and hasn't gone to the gas station. Well, that's the gas. That, that's the gas situation. It, let me just say that you know, because um, um, this is a lot of conversation. And I'm telling you, it's amazing who how people are weighing in this, in this conversation and giving uh, who, are, who are on Facebook. And one friend who actually works at the auction says leasing is awesome. He says, ask him what are the advantages of warranty, and does he offer unlimited miles on any leases, and what type of cars do you lease so this is the person who actually works at the auction but now is saying that leasing is awesome and asking questions with regard to it i guess for themselves and as we're having in the context of this conversation i'm gonna be honest with you yes you just do a lot at me so i'm gonna <laughs> that a little bit but here we go um the advantages of leasing like i said you have an abundant amount of options after the lease is over one one, let's say, again, let's say you finance a car, and let's say after a year you don't like it and you try to trade it back in, you've made maybe 12 payments on that car and you owe probably about 80 or 90. So the money that you're going to get from that car, again, is significantly less. With, with leasing, let's say you lease a car for two years and you bring it in a year and a half. You bring it in after a year and a half because you want something new. Not only will we get you out of the lease, but nine times out of ten will allow you to have a lower monthly payment than what you originally had. One, because of customer loyalty because that's just how Prime does it and we're awesome. Uh, three, we show you the residual up front because we, the, the customer needs to know that that number doesn't change and we're not really about, not really, we're not about smoke and mirrors at all. We show you the, the, the buyout, basically. That's another option if you wanted to buy out the car, I finance the rest of the car after you lease the car. Let's say you love it, you bring it back in, you're like, hey, you know what, I love the car, I want to keep it, I want to finance the rest of the amount. They show you that when you first lease the car, so you know in your head you're able to plan three years in advance how much you're going to finance. Like imagine what a finance payment would be up front if you finance a $45,000 car. Your payment's going to be at least in the 860s. Now if you lease that car first for the first three years, three years, whatever the case, you need to remember you've been shipping away at that MSRP for the past couple of years. So your payment, your, 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 your payment is going to go from a $45,000 car to maybe let's just throw out a number if they happen to I would much rather lease a car, find out if I actually like it and can see myself in it and want to own it, and finance the car first. And finance the car first outright and have my car and it be $800 and change. You know what I mean? So, like, seriously, with leasing, you have so many options. Mm -hmm. And the wor let's say worst-case scenario, mm -hmm. you bring the car back, you're like, you know what? The car was nice for three years, but I want, I want let's say, uh, Lexus. So you gotta charge you a disposition fee. No more than four hundred, at least like three fifty or something, and you walk away clean. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You're free to do whatever you want, and you're out of it. Mm -hmm. So he Whereas has, you finance, you owe the rest of that payment unless you sell it privately and get more money. And the best thing about it, the, the, the best thing about it, let's just say worst case scenario, you lease a car and you get into a car accident. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say you drive the car off a cliff, mm -hmm. right? They showed you how much that car was worth when you first signed. Let's say let's just throw out a number and say the car's worth twenty seven grand. Totaled or not, that car is still worth that same amount. Either way. Mm -hmm. the car doesn't decrease in value regardless. Even if even if it's sold, I'm not advising you to do that, but worst case scenario, even if that car gets sold, yeah, you could go through insurance and they could fix it, you could do that. Or you could just pay it back in. And the, 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 the buyout, the residual, is still going to be the same. So it's not like you're losing money on the lease. Jeremy, were, were you in a special car selling, selling <laughs> seminar today? <laughs> no. Um, honestly, in, in all honesty, yesterday was the 31st, the end of the month. I had to close four deals to wrap my month up. Unfortunately, I only closed three, but... Long story short, I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off. So I had so much information. I had so many questions thrown at me yesterday that I'm just, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm locked and loaded. <laughs> Clearly. So one of the questions he asked was, do you offer unlimited miles on any of your leases? Do we offer unlimited miles? Uh -huh. what, 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 what does he mean by that? 
I, I don't know. You talk, he he was saying this is the question. The guy who works for the auction he says, "Do you offer unlimited mile mileage?" I guess because with leases, there's there's a mileage variable. So he's saying, "I can answer that." Oh, one. oh, okay. no, unlimited miles? No, no, what? right. That's why you want to take this one. Right, I'll take this one because I'm lock and loaded. <laughs> okay, so you go. You can either get twelve thousand miles okay. a year, okay. or fifteen thousand miles if you know Jeremy. Okay. And is there anything higher than 15,000 miles? There is. Uh, there's 18, and in very, very special cases. This is a good thing about Prime. In the very special cases, we actually offer up into the 50s. How much? 50. 50? Why, did, why didn't you give me 50,000? Because you didn't need it. Why? Because it's contingent upon what which you might need in terms of mileage. So you have no, a no. We 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 sell customers' cars based off their needs and how honest they are and what they tell us. So if you tell me that you do under ten k a year, I'm not going to put you in an eighteen k lease and raise your payment maybe two hundred dollars. I'm going to put you in a twelve k lease. And if you if you, if maybe you you know after a year you're close to going over your miles and you bring the car back, we talk about it. You have two options: uh, you can get an extended lease, mm -hmm. or you can just buy the car then. That's a good that's that's good information again. So to in response to his question, that's good information to be able to get out. Right. But now he also says, What type of cars do you lease? And I know you've answered some of that question before, but this is a person who's not asked you know, who's not been tuned in. So what's the range of cars that you know or or value cars? I know you've talked about that that you actually lease or would recommend leasing. Uh, so we're talking about strictly used, right? I don't think so. He 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 asked what type. So I think he's looking for the whole range. Whether oh, they do uh, or used. Prime Prime Toyota is actually one of the only companies that I know that leases used cars. Um, it's an important they started maybe a little less than a year ago, mm -hmm. and it was to appeal to everybody's particular circumstance. Like I said, everybody the situations change every day, so they didn't want to exclude anybody. They want to include everybody and put you in an affordable car that you can get to know for the next couple of years and actually make a long-term decision. Um, so they lease used cars specifically three years old. So it's 2016 now, so we're talking the 2013 to 2014. That's it. We can't go any further than that because, unfortunately, those cars have a good amount of miles on and, and that just doesn't work in the least. So these, these 13s, these 14s, these 15s, these cars, you got to understand, are priced very aggressively, number one. And two, they have no more than, let's say, 30,000 30, miles on. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because the person had that car stuck within the restraints of the, uh, the, the, the mile limit. So if you think about it, you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. You're getting... A fairly new car with the new technology, and you're also getting a car with more miles. That if you keep it and maintain it, a car could last you potentially two fifty plus mile wise. Hmm. Interesting. With regard to back to the auction, and it's interesting, this is um actually a friend who is encouraging me to actually go with the auction route. Vice the you know if you if you do that, I'd like to go with you. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Listen, but his, let me just speak to some of their rationale because I'd be curious to hear what you say to this. So they say, one, you buy your car at an auction. You pay one time and you're done. No more payments to worry about, no leasing. The best way to go is at an auction. You don't need unnecessary bills. You buy one at auction once it's done. You get a new one and upgrade each time. And that a particular person that they know bought their car at an auction for $3,000, and it's a nice car. A few things. Well, actually, I only have two things to say. I'll answer them in order. Have you ever heard the expression, you pay for what you get? Yes, I have heard that. Okay, I have learned that my entire life. My first car was a 2002 Mazda 626. It was purchased for, I believe, three or $4,000. I didn't have car payments, so I just paid insurance. Insurance was a little high, but whatever. Brand new car, high school kid, they were driving all around. My engine died on me within six months, twice. Mm -hmm. I replaced my engine twice. Um, I say that to say, seriously, in every meaning of the word, you pay for what you get. Mm -hmm. And two, yes, you have no car payments. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is particular. Yes, you have no car payments, but you know, honestly, 
honestly, it's only one. You pay for what you get. I've had, I've had, I've, I've, I'm 24 years old. I've ran through at least six cars by now. Four or five of them have been, yes, three thousand, yes, four thousand, yes, five thousand dollar cars. And granted, the friend that you're talking about from the auction. I mean, if, if they had a friend or they bought a car for three grand and it's been able to last them, you know, kudos too, honestly. But I will say that's a diamond in the rough. I worked in the car industry enough to see every day, day in and day out, that you pay for what you get. Seriously, like it, it's and again, cars have you got to think about it, like cars have cars. Cars like a, 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 a shoe, like they have so many moving parts. Like you know what, it, it, it could be something as small as. I don't know, as a, as a, as a AD adapter or something, they can cost up until $2,000 to fix, plus, you know, the part and the labor. In my head, you either get a certified car, so you're back, so you're back, um, you know, basically, so you have like a little insurance policy, or you go brand new. Mm-hmm. And again, I, I've, I, honestly, I still don't have a new car. All my cars up until now have been used cars. I have had problems with every single one of them. And the funny thing about it is the money I put I, I put into these old cars, mm-hmm. I spent more on the money I've invested on the cars than I actually did to pay for the car. Are you driving a new car now? No. I'm driving a, no, not at all. I'm driving a sports car for the summer. And i got to figure out something to do for the winter. But, uh, um, yeah, I'm actually going to get a new car now. That's what SUV is. I'm actually thinking about leasing a Venza, to be honest, for the one of the all wheel drive and they have from the back end crazy amount of space. So I should be leasing a Venza. But my point is, like my current car, for example, I paid um, $3,000 for. Mm-hmm. I've had to put in at least $1,500 to get the car to. Point A to point B, not even to mention the gas. I swear I would not have bought this car if I looked at the gas mileage before. I drive to work and back. My my, I said my tank's full. I drive to work and back. I'm I'm halfway. Can can I say? Can I uh, listening to this conversation? It's it is. I had not planned to talk about that. Right. But you have people. You have people on our on our web page. Four anonymous people who are listening to this craziness, <laughs> and then on Facebook. You got people who are actually making comments about this. And um, I, right. I also want to say that I laugh at you when I get in my car and I drive for a week and a half to two weeks and I don't have to put, I don't have to put gas in my car. Okay? Yes, sir. Absolutely. But you know what's funny? Um, I remember all the, all the broadcasts that we've done and I've never been as fired up as I am today. If I can be completely honest, it's because I didn't meet the quota I had set for myself. So, I'm doing everything I can to try and sell cars, try and put people in the right cars, trying to get them at the uh, comfortable monthly payment, just making sure my customers are happy. Cause again, I had a customer come to me today, something I messed up on, actually. This, is, this goes back to a month or two ago. Um, and he was telling, he's actually a lawyer, and he was telling me, it's so funny. He said, listen, I know you're busy. You probably don't even remember me. It's been, I don't know, maybe two or three months since I bought the car from you, and blah, 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 blah. But your personality, your honesty, your patience with me, given the fact that he didn't even know what, what kind of car he wanted or needed. He said, your patience with me just is why I'm not upset about uh, uh, what, what didn't get done. And I say that to say that the car business is really about repeat business. So you've really got to be... Aggressive, honest, and humble. Month in and month out. And, and honestly, it's funny. A lot of people think you get into the car business to make money. And on, I'll be even more honest. When I went into it, that, that was my number one goal. But the reality of it, after you actually spend time with these people and get to know them, you actually build a relationship with them. Like, you're, 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 you're their guy. Like, let's say they have a problem with their car. Before they bring the car to the service, they come to see you. So you really need to treat your customers with honesty and respect and be humble about it. Because the car business is about repeat business and referral. So I need to, like I said, be locked and loaded on every single customer and give them the time they need to honestly put, ah, I can't even talk right now, to put a smile on their face and uh, and make sure they, 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 they walk out happy and, uh, and, and they know they got a deal. You know, so 
this um what's, what's the word I'm looking for? This opinion I hear from customers, I hear it all the time. People always tell me like at the beginning, they always tell me, Oh, listen, I hate this process, I hate buying cars, blah 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 blah. You know, it's 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 honestly the the, the, the number one thing that I hate because it's so stressful and there's the back and forth and the games and all that kind of stuff. And I told them right back, listen, I'm not here to waste your time. I'm actually here to get all the information I can from you so I can help you better and put you in a car that you're going to be happy about. You know, and you're going to be at a, you're going to be at a, a, a affordable monthly payment and you're also going to be able to handle all your business. You know, that's why, um, that's the wall. When you, when you came in to get your car, what did we do? The first thing we did when we sat down. Do you remember? For, yes, the first thing we did when we sat down is that you told me to get rid of my three-ring binder uh, notebook because I was embarrassing you with all the well, facts one, that one, I had we, more we facts. We closed at 9, and you came in at 8.30. The fact that you brought, like, a folder means we're going to be here till like, 11. Okay? You obviously know I was going to get you the best deal possible. But um, <laughs> what, what we did was fill out what we call a needs analysis. And it's funny because like, it's, it's so funny. Half the customers will literally come in there and say to you, hey, listen, I want to buy a car. I want to go on a test drive, but I don't want to do it today. I only have 30 minutes. I have to pick up my kids. I, I have a daughter's appointment. I'm busy. Okay. Um, so you sit down with them. You fill up the needs analysis. And it's, 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 it's a few questions. I've even gotten the term probing. It's, it's, it's not like that. It's literally so that the questions that we ask, literally allow the business to put you on the right car at a, at a payment that's affordable to you. You know, so it's, um, yeah, the car business is funny. And it's, I, I went off on a crazy tangent. Pass the house, I'm so sorry. I got, I got power up, my fault. Um, this is the last thing I'll say and I'll let you guys go. For the gentleman at the auction. Yes. Who said that if you buy a car, or whatever the case, then you know you don't have a monthly payment. Or actually, no, that was that was not the person. the The person who works at the auction actually has actually converted to being able to say that leasing is a better deal. Um, and, you know, and asked more questions about the unlimitedness, and you gave those variables, and then said, "What deals do you have?" That was the person who actually works for the auction who actually has come to your side and said, and the other person who was encouraging me, um, who's just a personal friend. You said the person who came to my side. Huh? You said the person who came to my side. Yeah, what I'm saying is a person who actually works for the auction, he they have now changed their position and they're actually supporting that the uh leasing is a better way to go, um, post you answering all their questions. And the person who actually was a neutral person who was actually saying that it's better to buy and not have the payments who's just a friend is now saying that you're actually a really good salesperson and they're now going to the side that they think that leasing may also be a better option. They said, but I am a person that if I want to get something, I just get it, not to lease for me. That would be up to me being me, but it's not for them. Can I ask you one more question before I, before I let you guys go? Before you guys let me go? Sure. <laughs> I mean, I know you go through the promotion and the steps, but uh, how would you feel about coming to see me tomorrow at the wall? Who? Tomorrow night. Me? Yeah. For what? I mean, obviously, obviously, I know you're not going to buy a car for right then and there, but I at least want you to put your foot in the door and just like gear your mind towards the end goal. That's kind of when you see like how it works and what's going on, so that when you're ready, you can look online and see what we have. Yeah, that's what I want. That's how much I want to pay, and I'll make it happen. I can't even imagine how I could even to be, to be very transparent. One, how even I would have time to be able to do that on tomorrow. As, as I mean, one just with all the time I plate and the priorities. I mean, it just it wouldn't seem rational, practical to be able to try to squeeze that on my plate on tomorrow with a I mean a full day that I already have and trying to chip away at all these things that I've got to do. It just it wouldn't seem like it's the best use of, of my time. Quite candidly. <laughs> But no, but I definitely want to come talk to you, man. I definitely do. I mean, I appreciate your perspective and you give me some education and, and, you know, and so, I mean, definitely trust me, man. And when I, when it gets to the point that I mean, um, that I get past this, um, you know, this initial stuff of, of even getting my license, I'm definitely going to come see you. Definitely going to come talk to you. Um, so, you know, I appreciate the information. I'll say, I'll say do this. At least tell me that you'll do this. Um, 
Pass the Wall knows the website, but I'll just say it anyways. It's driveprime.com. Okay. And Prime owns about 30 stores. So, like, you have your you have your Audi, you have your Porsche, you have your uh, Honda, Audi, Toyota, Mazda, mm-hmm. Kia, everything. Mm-hmm. If you do me a favor of going online mm-hmm. and looking at, you got to type in the you got to type in the location, um, Prime Boston, mm-hmm. Prime Toyota of Boston. Mm-hmm. But just look at our inventory. Mm-hmm. Just, I don't know, you know, let's say you take two, three months or whatever the case. Just look at your inventory every couple of weeks to see if there's something that is affordable that you like. I don't know if the girls everything. And if you tell me a few cars that you like, then I'll see what I can do for you. Affordable or not? Does that work? Sure. So what do you say? It's Prime Tour to Boston or Preston was the website, but I'm trying to punch it in now just that I, I have it. What you is go it? Go to Drive Prime. What is it? Drive. Like drive. D R I V. Drive Prime. P R I M E. Uh huh. Dot com. Okay. The website will pop up and you'll see a tab on the top that says Use Cars. You can look at both if you want, but you hit Use Cars and then there'll be a drop down list on the left. And one of the, the last options is like location. And one of the last options on that is my location specifically to see what we have on site. And your location is where? Massachusetts? Is Toyota Prime, Boston. Uh, okay. Search by location. Uh, wait, I, I don't know what I did. Okay, search by location. When I Okay, so use cars, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Click on that? Yeah, yeah, use cars. And then there should be a drop-down list on the side that says, it'll say price, location, mileage, um, all that kind of stuff. You're going to go to the bottom, and it'll say location. Uh, I'm seeing all these cars. Well, you could go way down to the bottom, you're saying? And it'll say location? Yeah, way down to the bottom. It'll say location. Okay, I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. See all these cars, but I don't see. It. Wow, where's the bottom, man? I mean, the bottom's not taking forever to so scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Anyway, I guess I'll figure it out. I'm gonna hold you up, but um, anyway, I'll figure it out. Can Can I say just for the record, mm-hmm. uh, Jeremy or Jeremiah? Yeah, Jeremiah, there you go. There you that, go. that you just took up 45 <laughs> minutes of my radio time. I just want you to know that. That's all that's said. Let's see how it says about this. All right? I gave you guys a ton of information. I basically gave you guys like a cheat sheet. Well, you have a wonderful rest of the evening, and I'll see if I can rescue and restore my broadcast. Okay, but before you go, let me say one more thing. First of all, you have a surprise waiting for you when you go home. Okay? Uh, yeah, it's probably my life insurance policies, but okay. No, it's PJ. I have fun with that. Goodbye. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> well now. <laughs> well now. Woo. I wanted us to have a a, a very 